Okay, we'll be going over how to use the cut glove. So if you are using anything with a blade, like the mandolin or the cheese grater or the slicer or anything that you feel that you might cut your finger with, um, not necessarily a knife, but with anything that has a blade on it, um, put a glove on the dominant hand that you're gonna be slicing the item with. And then glove first, and then the cut glove, okay? And then another glove. This way you don't have to worry about, if you keep it from getting dirty, you don't have to worry about washing the glove or we can wait till the end of service and people can use the, the glove because once it gets wet, you can't really use it until it's dry. Um, and if you're using the mandolin, you have it so you, that you can slice or even slice with the little mandolin and then you can even slice or grate with the cheese grater without getting your fingers cut. Um, the the um, glove will cut the, the blades will cut the glove faster than it'll cut your finger. So if you just do that, if you ever feel a snag, then you know that you're getting too close to the blade. Um, and this will protect your hand if you go ahead and make sure you use the cut glove. And that same goes with the slicer. Okay. Okay, and then these are the mixing bowls. Um, usually we store them by size, small, medium, and then medium, and then large. Um, but usually we can stack them interchangeably in like this, a small bowl, and then you keep going. And this large one is actually a medium one, and we have even larger ones after that. This is a small version of the colander that we use um, to strain anything if you wanted to wash vegetables or apples or um, anything that you need to just wash in the sink but drain as well. I would recommend putting the bowl to the side, washing whatever you needed to wash, and then putting the colander on the bowl so that it drains the water. Please do not walk around the kitchen like this, running around with water dripping everywhere. It can cause a hazard. Okay, this is called a bell. Um, we use it to cover any of the proteins on the grill or even on the flat top to seal in the heat to cook the item faster. Um, these are two versions of sizzle platters. You can place items uncooked items or even cooked items on it um, for service. Um, and then these are called cooling racks or roasting racks. Um, usually we use it more for cooling. Um, anytime you work with a stainless steel table, you want to place the cooling rack on the table if you want to place anything hot on top of the table. Uh, as, uh, as well as wood. Um, stainless steel, wood, any surface. The marble is maybe the only surface you don't need to use a cooling rack. Um, but for the wood and the stainless steel, you want to use the cooling rack because anything that's hot, if you place it directly on the table, the wood can burn or the stainless steel will start warping. So if you see any of the tables that have waves to it, it's because too much heat was applied to it and the metal started to warp. Um, the reason why I say don't do that is because in the future when you own your own restaurant and you own your own company, you want to preserve equipment because you don't want to spend tens and thousands of dollars on equipment because people were not um, using the equipment properly. So we have this one is a quarter cooling rack. And this one's a half cooling rack. And of course the half one fits in the half sheet tray and that's a half sheet tray, okay? And so if, and then this is a full sheet tray with a full cooling rack on top. Um, you might use the full one um, with the full sheet tray in this scenario if we were roasting prime rib, something large, or if you wanted to roast something smaller, like a whole chicken or something, you can use the half rack, um, but mo mainly we use the racks for cooling, um, not much cooking. And that is it.